Hi, this is Michael De Silvas from New Hunter Church of Christ. I think there's a lot of things we need to really examine as a body of Christ. And these are some questions I would like to leave with you as some things to think about. And what I see is simply this. Do you go to a church where you feel like you're being challenged by the Spirit and challenged by your leadership there to learn and to grow in Christ? Is the atmosphere where you go as warm and welcoming and acceptable and accepting to you and allows you to be included in activities and give you fair opportunities to advance and fair opportunities to grow and to be challenged and also to lead others in your congregation in that church body? Do you feel like you are treated fair like everyone else? Or do you have some, you know, some people have churches there. I mean, some churches have people in their congregations where they feel like they're entitled. I like because they feel like they've been there so long that they kind of make this decision on who can come to their church and who can't. But evidently, I think that's really God's domination, domain as far as that goes. You know, if we have a church and God's in charge of it, then why do so many people try to be in charge of it? Do you another thing I like to ask you, do you have a church do you have churches that are more concerned with their image, their self image, than rather than preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you have people that think that they can take communion every day, but don't really take the communion based on how the scripture is outlined in and First Corinthians 11. You know, because communion is supposed to be taken with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Of course you can take communion every day. But like Harvey Hacker said at his, at his meeting, that you can, it's better to take it with the presence of other believers. Okay? That is, that's just what's so important, you know? Because if we just do everything just by what we feel, then of course, you know, it really loses its meaning. And that's what we see happen in a lot of our churches. Does your church have programs and have a lot of things where it feels more corporated or more organized, like organized worship instead of really teaching the real truths about God that are innately in God's Word? Does your church put the Bible first before anything else? And what it's teaching and use that as its source for teaching a rebuking and correction and accountability measures when implementing them in the church does your church exercise excommunication when people do things wrong to the body or to its members or within the church that need to things where they need to be excommunicated like things like adultery you know, things like foreign occasion things like drugs uh, things about uh, lying, gossiping. Does your do you, do does your Church of Christ or your any other churches that you may go to are they exercising uh, excommunication until they have a change in heart and lifestyle? Or if someone's caught having ha, doing homosexual or lesbian acts in your church, are they excommunicated from the body until they repent and convert from being homosexual to heterosexual? Why do so many people shun the gay community in the Church of Christ? Because I see a lot of that going on in the Church of Christ. Instead of going over there like Jesus did and preaching the truth and proclaiming love to them. You know, are we going out there as ambassadors to love the gay and lesbians by teaching them the truth with love and boldness and with kindness and affection? Or are we just shunning people and hating people and not really being real true lovers of telling the truth to them so that they can have a chance to repent and have the same opportunities that you had to come to Christ because of their sin. Are we hating people or are we hating the sin? Because we're supposed to hate the sinner. I mean, hate the sin, not the sinner with the sin. We're supposed to just hate the sin. But many people are hating the sinner as well as the sin. And that's what's wrong with the church. Are we getting carnal in our teachings and thinking that we need to judge people when yet we when we're no we don't have the right to do that because that's God's domain, and that we shouldn't be judging other people ourselves when yet we need to work at issues that are in our life. It's like look at the little look at the little log, look at the big log that's in your eye before you look at somebody else's plank and their and their speck in their eye, 
It's kind of the same forte. So, you know, think about it. You know, I ask you these questions. Do you feel often inclusive with activities or with lines of discussion, even when other people disagree with what you say because they don't agree the same way? Or do you feel like they excommunicate you in a way because they don't want to hear what you have to say? Another thing I would like to ask you, do people practice true forgiveness in the church? Or do they say, I forgive you, but then they go around talking about it with everybody in other churches? Do you hear that? Do you see that going on in your church? Do people give in your church and tithe and help people who are needed or other ministries in and outside the church? If they're not doing that in their church or doing it outside, and then they judge and get on other people who are doing good works of righteousness for the Lord in ministry. But then they're so quick to judge other people and make statements that they're using things wrong when yet they don't even really know what they're talking about. So you have to ask yourself, is your church challenging you to learn the gospel? Is your church challenging you to go out and start your own ministry? Because that's what churches are supposed to be doing the last time I thought. Are they preparing? Are they doing witnessing campaigns? Are they going out in the community and getting involved with people? Are they having dinners and having sometimes yard sales or bake sales outside their church sometimes to bring people together? Are they having ice cream socials to promote kids and also to bring the parents in the church? You know, are they having car washes? Sometimes you can do that to help bring people together and to bring new people to your church. Are you, are you communicating and working with other churches in your area? A lot of churches of Christ aren't doing that anymore. A lot of them claim that they have not a lot of time and they'd rather just do their own thing rather than work together like a lot of churches used to do in the past. And that's true about all of the nominations. A lot of them used to do that, used to get together and have like song fest and have like where people got together and they did many different parts of worship. But now you don't see that much anymore in a church now because everybody's to, them, to themselves and Therefore, you don't see the hints of new ideas that are being cultivated in the body. Like, when people got together, that's why they did, so they could share and discuss ideas and strategies and preaching and methodologies. So they could prove on their technique and could improve as teachers and members in its body. But a lot of churches aren't going that way anymore. So, what I'm saying is, if we stop doing these little things, these are what are going to destroy a lot of churches in the body of Christ. All these things that I've talked about are things that we need to look at and re-examine. You know, with a fine tooth and comb and say, hey, you know, maybe I'm too judgmental. Maybe I'm too legalistic. You know, maybe I'm too carnal. Maybe I'm too, uh, you know, maybe I'm just too, way too judgmental to people. Maybe I always feel like I have to put someone down or justify my actions that you know, so I can learn to get along, to get along attitude when God doesn't tolerate that kind of attitude. Nobody has the right to mistreat anyone and justify their actions with a just with an excuse on why they do it. A lot of that's going on in church. People have the you know, it's people in the church that try to control and manipulate others in the body, and it's not about what their agenda is. It's ultimately about what God's agenda is. Do you have that going on in your church? Do you feel like leadership is more concerned about their image instead of more concerned about real worship? True worship? You know, are they more into like just what's the latest trends and what, what the public community does to try to fit in, to blend in, or so worried about their image because they don't want to get hurt because they don't want to really say the truth because they're afraid that They'll lose attendance and lose numbers. Are they more concerned about their offering and membership instead of really teaching the message of gospel of Jesus Christ? Because it's not about the numbers. It's not about attendance. It's not about the membership. It's about loving people. And then all that stuff about membership and offerings, it all will increase. But you shouldn't have to worry about it. Most churches always focus on the offering. And a lot of them just worry about that. And that's why they lose short and why they're losing members. You know, it's more about the offering or their self-image or how they project themselves in the community or to others around them. Are you one of those churches that are doing that? Or you are in a church where that might be going on? You need to find a church and uproot yourself from there. Paul says, don't walk, but run. 
if they're more concerned about themselves and not really teaching the gospel, you know, if they're so worried about exhorting what other preachers say instead of tell, talking about what the Bible says, then you need to leave that church. Okay? Because we need to promote Christ. We need to worship under Christ. We need to teach from Christ. And we need to be like little Christ. That's what disciple means, really, in, it, in its context. We are little Christ that do the work of Jesus. Think about these things. I'm not trying to put down the church or slander the church of Christ. I want you to really boldly look at these things. If you're guilty of these things, stop it. Regroup, rethink. Are you in a church where you feel like your hands are tied and the leadership won't allow you to do anything? I didn't bring that up. But some people are in churches that are preachers and churches in the church of Christ and other denominations where it's like that. And you can't really do anything as a preacher when you're in a church like that. I mean, why take a job and lead a church if they're not going to allow you to really do your job as a minister? You know, when you your hands are pretty much tied. Because they won't allow you to do anything that's new or anything that's different. That could definitely help build the church up and also bring more people to it. You know, invite friends to your church. Always ask, get your kids in all your Sunday school classes in the youth group. And, and all the adults that go there and ask them to bring friends to church. That's how you build your numbers up. You know, how you get more people to come in the door is by inviting them. Asking your friends and co-workers outside of work. And inviting them simply to come to your church. And then when you invite them, make sure you're there. Don't have, don't have them come and then when they come to visit, you're not there. You know, to greet them and to sit with them. Because people come because they're coming to see, they're coming because they, you asked them to come. But don't say for them to come and then you not be there because that's really a bad thing to do. Because, you know, it kind of, if they're already nervous and they're coming to a church and you're not there to greet them, to show them around and stuff, that's just not a good thing. So, you know, if you're going to invite people, it's great, but be there when you do. That way they can sit with you and you can show them around and show your friends and so forth. You know, but these are things to think about. Shalom, Michael De Silva's. I love you. Stay strong in the faith, and remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Take care, Evangelist Michael De Silva's for New Hunter Church of Christ.